And now, have you ever thought of becoming your own boss? Well, I sure have. <laughs> now, one person who could help you do just that is our next guest. He's uh, Dr. Timothy Stearns, an expert in entrepreneurship who's helped many startup companies realize their dreams. And he's here to share with us some tips on how to get that right now. Good morning, Tim. Welcome to the show. Well, good so, morning, and thank you for having me. Uh, Singapore is such a beautiful place. I yeah, enjoy being back is this here. Your, oh, you've been here a few times I've been before? here a few times, but yeah. uh, I always Escaping enjoy coming cold, to the huh? city. Uh, <laughs> well, California is not too bad, uh, but it is a little bit colder. Okay, you had some snow. Well, let's talk about uh, starting up companies. You've helped many companies start up. I mean, what do you find is often the most uh, difficult perhaps obstacles right at the start that, that sort of a young entrepreneurs may not be aware of? Well, I think uh, young or old. I think the, the key is understanding what your product is. Many people come up with an idea, they get a product, but then they're not quite sure how to link that to a customer. And of course, if you don't have a customer, it doesn't matter how the product mm -hmm. operates or how good it is. That to me is a fundamental challenge for, for anyone because it's hard with a new product or a new idea to figure out who exactly wants it. And I try to remind entrepreneurs all the time that you're not the customer, that you have to rely on someone else to buy your product, right. even though you love your product. And how do you test that out to see, you know, um, will people dig your product? Well, you spend a lot of time uh, uh, getting the product in front of customers to get feedback. Most people who come up with a product idea, they give it to their friends, and I, I always tell them, you know, your friends are liars. Uh, you know, they, they always tell you they love it, That's right? right. Uh, you know, and so they don't really, they're not the best source for giving you the truth about, about the product. So we try to get them into people who are willing to make a very honest response about it and to give feedback and try to determine whether or not that product is exactly where it needs to be in terms of coming into right. the market. So is that the first essential step, sort of uh, knowing whether your product will work or not work in the market? Absolutely. And, and the second, and, and I think this is vitally important, is that the individual needs to have the ability to pursue the entrepreneurial process with a great deal of dedication. Many people will tire from it very quickly. Okay. And speaking of product, Facebook, I mean, that's yeah. a really good uh, product and the founder, you know, amongst We would all like to have a little bit of that. <laughs> but, you know, that's a very unusual. We don't, uh, you know, probably one out of a hundred uh, companies that are launched and formed really are companies that try to move forward. Uh, into a high-scale, high-value company. Most people try to build a company that will give them a nice lifestyle, something right. that will support mm -hmm. them, provide education for the kids, and so on. Mm -hmm. Well, how, how important is it for the person? Because I, I've known of entrepreneurs who are really passionate about what they do, but sometimes I look at them and think, this guy doesn't quite have the business acumen to, mm -hmm. to run a business. Should there be two sides to the, uh, an ideal entrepreneur, one that can look at the content, one that can also sell? Yeah, it, I mean, it's helpful if you know something about business, but you take someone like a Steve Jobs, is really not a business person, but he's a good person to cast a vision and put people around him that can move that business forward. So if you don't have strong business schools, you find the people who can do that. And that, to me, gets into the whole notion of, of, of innovative leadership, which I think is vitally important, is that any company, whether it's an entrepreneurial startup or a large-scale company, needs someone at the leadership level or people around them that understand how to be innovative, particularly as we move into the 21st century with all the globalization going on and the pressures that are coming about on markets and, and demands, it's become a much more competitive place. Mm -hmm. So in other words, like, you don't necessarily have to be born with you know, entrepreneurship skills. If you surround yourself with the right people, you Absolutely. can still make things happen. I, I think of it this way, is that uh, you're the conductor, you're not the musician. Uh, you're the person who needs to find the best flutist, the, the best uh, bassist, you know, the best right. percussionist. If you're better than the person playing the music, uh, you probably shouldn't be the conductor. You should be sitting in there playing the music. And so the, the leader of an organization, and this is part of that innovative process and entrepreneurial skill set, is the person who knows how to make good music out of the uh, orchestra, right. out of people who have the competencies and skills to be great. But that can be hard because when you're first starting out, usually it's just I, me, and myself, you know, <laughs> and, uh, and to, to sort of get a group of people to, so you're good at creating the software, creating the product, but to find the other people to kind of jump on the bandwagon with you might not be so easy. Yeah, you're washing the bottles in the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. starting off. I mean, that's part of the uh, requirement for the stamina, and that's what you look for. Can you go through this process? where you are going to, in the early stage, have to be everything, you're going to have to struggle. Uh, you better think it's fun, not work. Mm. Uh, otherwise, you're not going to make it. All right. So just moving on from um, the beginning stages, say you know, you're getting a bit of results, um, how, do you, how do you guide a company through 
you know, so that they reach the global level, say? Well, we look for what their, their goals are. I mean, you always want to conform to what it is, the vision of the individual and what they're trying to accomplish. So you spend a lot of time with them trying to figure out, are you trying to turn this into a large global enterprise? Mm -hmm. Or are you just happy to have a nice convenient store on the corner here that's mm -hmm. going to service a neighborhood? Or you want to do this simply in your bedroom uh, at a computer selling product over the but web? isn't that like thinking small? Isn't the whole objective is really to think big? And you know, even if you have a small convenience store, so turn it into like a 7-Eleven yeah. or... My, I, tell, I tell people, think big first because you can scale back later. Right. It's hard to think small and scale up. And so at the beginning stage, you want to get a vision of what the potential is. And then you can come down and say, okay, I'm happy or this is where I want to be. I don't want to put that extra energy, extra effort, the harder labor to try to scale it up. So you've got to have an end goal in sight, in, in a sense. You've got to know what's at the end of the rainbow, so to speak, and then decide where along the rainbow you decide to stop. You as the individual has to, have to know where you're going. Because Otherwise, you'll come up with confused decisions. Well, I guess that that's what often happens, because as you're planning along the way, you think, well, maybe we can try doing this, and then, but things keep changing all the time. You know, part of the challenge for me, and, and what we work hard on, is trying to get into the educational process, you know, entrepreneurial skill development. In fact, where we are in California, we've created what we call the Innovative Pathway. And the Innovative Pathways, we go into elementary schools, secondary schools, uh, technical schools, in colleges and we try to give people as they move through this pathway the skill sets that they need to be successful and we think that's important to become kind of an innovative leader in the right. future okay, okay. Um, well. and I suppose just very very quickly just before we wrap up um, if let's say I want to start a business tomorrow or next week what are the three uh, fundamental things that I need to know um, before I embark uh, are you willing to make the commitment uh, do you have a good idea and you've already tested the idea that people want it? And then thirdly, do you have the, the potential to gather money to kind of support that business and grow it? Yeah, okay. Well, thank you, All Tim, right. for speaking with us this morning. That was Dr. Timothy Stearns, a professor of entrepreneurship, just sharing with us some tips on how to become a successful and innovative entrepreneur. And that's why I'm not one, because I'm a scaredy cat. I'm, yeah, I'm pretty comfortable here. Yeah, I don't even like to gamble and lose $10. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, uh, we're going to head off for a short break, but uh, we'll be back in two minutes. Stay tuned. Stay tuned.